Hi guys. Today we're going to be changing the brake pads. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> On the beast. Yes. What's the beast? The beast. Tahoe, Chevy, 98. Four wheel drive. Four wheel drive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wishes look. Here we go. <laughs> What kind of tools are we going to need? There's some basic tools that we're going to need. First, we're going to have... You need... Brake pads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> need some brake pads. Jack and jack stand. Jack and jack stand. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to need... Uh, so we're going to use a 3 size uh, hex bit. Some people say we can use uh, c clamps to lay on to push the piston back into the caliper. But we were told that we can use this set right there from uh, auto zone. Or I can give us a secret. And of course along the way we may need something else that we do not have. <laughs> and that we'll figure out later. We'll figure it out when we get there. So is that about it? Should we get started? We should get started. Oh, joy to the world. I decided to put the video clips in a more logical order because we didn't do the steps exactly as shown. There was a little bit of trial and error along the way and we had to get more parts. Because the Tahoe is on a slight incline, we thought it would be safer to put wheel chocks behind the back wheels. Place the jack under the truck frame in a stable spot. Loosen the lugs on the tire before jacking up the truck. It is safer to then put the truck up on a jack stand for added safety and stability. So you'll need to raise the vehicle accordingly before placing the jack stand under the truck. Lower the truck onto the jack stand. Now you can remove the lugs and the wheel. Remove the rubber collars from the heads of the two caliper guide pins. Then remove the pins with a 3 8 inch hex key or hex bit. Have some patience, they might be pretty tight. We used WD-40 and a hammer to loosen them. Carefully pry the caliper off the rotor, or lightly tap it off with a hammer. The caliper is a bit heavy. Do not let the caliper dangle from the brake line. You can try hanging it from the axle with a wire coat hanger, or place it on top of a bucket. We put it on top of the axle and also sometimes used the wire coat hanger method. These are the caliper guide pins with the sleeves on them. You may wish to replace them or you can clean and reuse them if they are still good. We decided to change them. Also, remove the bushings from the caliper. There will be two in each guide pin hole or the caliper ears in the grooves. There is also another bushing on the outer part of the guide pin opening. Remove it.
You will want to replace the bushings and other rubber pieces. You can get the whole set at AutoZone. That's where we got ours. You will also need high temperature brake grease that you will put on the bushings, the guide pins, and onto the back of the brake pads. Now you can remove the brake pads. Take the outer pad off by prying off the clips. The inner pad may have a clip or two clips inside the piston. Pull it out of the piston. Clean the rotor with brake cleaner following the directions on the can. Be careful not to breathe brake dust or brake cleaner fumes. And it's also advised that you wear gloves. Replace the rotor. Make sure to open the brake fluid reservoir so that when the piston is compressed the fluid will have some room. Now it's time to compress the piston using the brake disc caliper tool set. We rented ours from AutoZone. First, select the adapter that will fit into the piston. I think we selected the B adapter. Slide the backing plate over the handle of the tool. Fit the round adapter on the end of the tool. Place the tool like this so that the backing plate fits where the outer brake pad would be and the adapter fits into the piston. Then tighten until the piston is fully compressed. This will allow room for the new brake pad. Now, grease the back of the brake pads to make it easier to guide into place when installing. It's also supposed to help absorb vibration when operating. Install the new pads making sure the brake wear indicator is facing toward the rear of the caliper when the caliper is placed back on the rotor. Now install all the bushings. Make sure the holes are clean and free of debris before you install them. Grease the bushings that will be in the grooves inside the guide pinholes, or caliper ears as they are properly called. Place the outer bushing in its groove. Grease the guide pins, then put them in their sleeves and grease the whole thing. Place the guide pins with sleeves into the caliper ears before placing the caliper over the rotor. It's easier to install them first, as they are a bit difficult to get into place. Also, there is no need to put the rubber collar over the guide pin as we have done until after the caliper is already bolted into place.
Now, reinstall the caliper and tighten with a 3 8 inch hex key as tight as possible. Also, we turned the wheels slightly in order to see the holes and line them up easier. Now you can replace the wheel and then repeat these steps on the other wheel. When you're finished, lower the truck and don't forget to close the brake fluid reservoir. Pump the brake pedal several times until you feel the brakes are engaging properly. That should do it. Any last words about the project? Oh, it's a very good learning experience. But you get money, can somebody else do it. Have somebody else do it. If you have the money. <laughs> okay. For cleanup. We're using palm olive soft touch and pure baking soda. Yeah. And look what a fabulous job it's doing. <laughs> For DIY because of this. Mm, you didn't get this one, it ain't real. It's not real. Mm -hmm. You didn't do anything if you don't have those. But really you should wear gloves, but yes. if you don't, for whatever reason, this actually works really well to clean up. We hope you found this useful. Please keep in mind, we aren't experts. This is just how we changed the brake pads on our 98 Chevy Tahoe. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. You guys take care out there. Until next time, bye.